came back to the law to say, what is your latest way of facing the same problem? What happened is a common problem. You become blasé. Oh, this is no problem. We can handle it. We've got experience. May God deliver us from learning from experience. Let's learn from the Holy Spirit. Let's be current. Don't say this is the way we've always done it. Hello? And that's why. Are you listening to me? One of the reasons I'm more behind is I'm now, uh, somebody called me old school. The way I've treated people like Brother Nii, Bawo, Baba, um, Femi, and so on. It's not the way I will treat you and it will go down well. So they are more on the... Um, I'm, 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 what am I? Anyway. Yes. I'm yesterday, they are today, you are tomorrow. So let today deal with tomorrow rather than yesterday dealing with tomorrow. Because my tactic, though it worked in the past, it may go the wrong way now. Because you are more modern. I mean, when I was young, Ladies wore belts around their waist. Now they wear it on top of their tummy. <laughs> when I was young, you wear a shirt, and then you will wear a pullover that will come down to your waist. Now they wear a shirt, and the pullover is a, smaller than a waistcoat. As if, it, as if it's shrunk in the wash. And that's fashion. Well, that's it. So you, you have to ask the Lord, what is the current? So David then said, Lord, he went back to the Lord. How do I tackle? And the Lord says, don't go straight like you did before. Go around. And when you hear the sound of marching on the mulberry trees, spiritually, you know the army of the Lord is behind you. If God isn't fighting for you, you fighting the enemy physically is not going to work. So never, ever become an expert thinking you know how to do it because you've done it before. Uh, and, and that's why I love young people or people who lack experience. They don't know how it's been done before, so they will try. Don't let us who are older and more experienced be a hindrance to those who are fresh. Because what was difficult for you in your day may not be difficult for them in their day. So don't let, them, don't let them be bound by your experience. Be available and because you too can learn. To God be the glory. And you know that um, we will be able to ask questions um, at the end if you so desire. And if I finish, I finish. All right? I'm not tied to time. I can go now. I'm not paid by the hour. <laughs> if I finish what I'm saying, I go. I don't have to fill in time. Are you happy with that? Yes. If you're not happy, too bad. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11 and have an, a fresh look at what is commonly known as the Holy Communion. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. Now, the, the, um, the practice in the church known as Holy Communion, I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a treatment as I gave to the issue of anointing oil, which means it may be controversial and it may be a habit that is difficult to break. But I think the way we do it, even we, is reminiscent of a leftover from the Catholic method of looking at the communion. Now, this is where I would love it if you help me. You know I'm getting old, and I don't know everything. So you need to help me to remember in case I'm missing the point. Um, can anybody rem think of where the word Holy Communion is mentioned in the Bible? Can you remember? Okay, so it's been given the word Holy Communion to communicate an idea not to translate what is written literally in the Bible. What we have in the Bible regarding Holy Communion so-called are the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, and breaking of bread. The Bible says in the book of Acts, they went from house to house and broke bread. The apostles' doctrine, prayer, fellowship, breaking of bread. Those are the things that happen from house to house. And there was a reason why breaking of bread happened from house to house. Even though the church met for massive rallies in Solomon's uh, uh, portico in the temple. You, to my knowledge... I can't remember any time in the Bible where either the Lord Jesus or the apostles had a holy communion in a stadium. It was always in a small group. Let me tell you what holy communion is not. And I would be very, I would like Controversy, controversy. I want people to attack me on this so that my bones can be strong. Well, so if you disagree, please open. There's nothing I, I can do to you. I'm too far away. Why I say the way we look and the way we eat and partake of Holy Communion is a vestige 
of the Catholic corruption is the Catholic Church believe in the doctrine of transubstantiation. And transubstantiation is why the bread and the wine literally after being blessed by the priest turn into the body and the blood of Jesus. And once they've put the wine in the cup and blessed it, it's become the blood of Jesus. And the priest is honor bound to make sure nothing is left. Even if he has to stagger off the altar. So if not, he, he will be praying that there won't be many communicants. That's why many Catholic priests are suffering from alcohol related problems. From the communion. I bless you my child. Now, we have not done much better. The doctrine of transubstantiation is taken from John chapter 6. Let's read from verse 53. The Gospel of John chapter 6 and verse 53. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Is that clear? Is that scriptural? Is that biblical? Is it in the Bible? Unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Eat he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. So the Catholic Church developed the doctrine whereby the way of salvation is via Holy Communion, which they call Mass. And a Catholic will do anything. The IRA will bomb people, kill people, maim people, but they won't miss mass. Because irrespective of what you do or who you are, once you have this provision given by the church, it's giving you a key to enter the kingdom of God. So the eating of the bread, uh, uh, the bread and the drinking of the wine is translated into eating the flesh and drinking the blood of Jesus in order to have eternal life that you may be raised up in the last day. But we who have made a protest, we who are Protestants that say no, the just shall live by faith. We're still going back to the way the Catholics use communion as a way of getting life and getting healing. That's why you hear testimonies that in the communion service, miracles happen, wonderful things take place, and some people, at least in Nigeria, they have their ministries to hire a huge football stadium and give you communion so you can be blessed. It's come from this. So may the Lord give us understanding of his word. So we don't take a particular scripture out of context. And then begin to practice it and not question what we do. 
let's question what we do, why we do it, so we can get maximum benefit. Is it true that Jesus was saying, or is that all he was saying, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. So if I don't take communion, somehow I'm not going to be able to have eternal life, healthy life, or be raised up in the last day. Because then he was misunderstood. But that misunderstanding has now become the basis of doctrine called Holy Communion. Because when you go to verse 61, we see another aspect of this. Now let's read it from verse 59. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore many of his disciples... When they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? Now, if somebody says, Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. So come on now. Lay down, let's begin to carve you up into um, portions. He says, if you're going to eat my blood and drink my, um, if you're going to, what did I say? <laughs> I told you I need help. <laughs> if you're going to eat my flesh and drink my blood, you saw me making a mistake and you didn't correct me. And if you made a mistake, I will correct you. Is that fair? Forget tradition. If I make a mistake, put your hand up. Brother Paul, how can we eat blood and, and drink flesh? Okay. What happens when you see me ascend to where I came from before? How are you going to eat my flesh then? If what I'm saying is a literal eating of my flesh and drinking of my blood, and that is offending you, am I talking of cannibalism? What happens if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? Verse 63, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I, that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So the Catholic got it wrong. Because he's, he's, he's talking about something else. So now let's go back. Let me tell you, some of the things I say, you may find it hard to practice because of habit. You want to change, your members will not let you change. You need to be like me. You need to be like me. I don't want to be popular, so I say what is truth. You like it, you don't like it, it's your problem. As I say to people, take your bike. On your bike, I don't, I'm not going to play with you anymore. If we are going to be a leader, we must be servant of God, not by popular vote. If you want to be popular all the time, you will not do the truth. If people want to walk out, let them walk out. Those who want to know the truth will find you out somewhere. It may take time. I'm saying the same thing I've said many, many years. Many years ago, I didn't used to be popular. I wouldn't get so many people come to my meeting. I couldn't even give away my tapes. <laughs> Somebody asked me, why don't you do Brother Paul's tapes? He said, nobody asked for them. But I, stopped, I didn't stop saying the same thing. I'm not going to change for you. Hello? 
If you say the truth, one day somebody will realize you don't want to be popular, you want to be truthful. I'm not preaching like a black man and I'm not preaching like an Englishman. I'm preaching like a person who wants to see Jesus and not be ashamed. So let's go back to Corinthians and um, uh, um, chapter 11 and verse 23. For I received from the Lord. Now listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took what? Answer me now. Yes. What did he take? Yes. How many? For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took yes. bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. So it's very important that we understand that he took bread, not pieces of bread. Not the one we have now when it has been conveniently packaged, cut into slices. All the crusts have been taken away. And some even go so far as to buy their bread from Jerusalem or buy from somewhere where it's made on leavened bread or any other. It's not the cut kind of bread. It's the loaf that we're talking about, not the way it's been baked. You will see what I mean as I go along. Do you trust me enough to, yes. to listen? Yes. No, all these things are their rhetorical questions. If you say you don't trust me, I will still carry on. <laughs> so I don't need your appro approval. Yeah, and the, the worst thing you can do is not to call me back. <laughs> right. Are you listening to me? He took bread. Important thing is, he broke it. It's the breaking of bread that we're talking about. Let's get away from Holy Communion to breaking bread. He took the bread and he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now listen. He said, when you break bread and you take it and you eat it, you are doing it in remembrance of him. Do you need the Holy Communion to remember that Jesus lived and died? Come on, friends. So what does it, what, what, what does it mean then? Oh, I forgot Jesus died. Until I get to the Holy Communion. Ah. Ah. He died. Oh, thank you for reminding me. I've forgotten until now. No. The word remember is not because you've forgotten. Let's do some basic English. Say build. Never mind if you feel silly. I do too when somebody tells me to do it. Say build. build. Say rebuild. rebuild. What does rebuild mean? Build again. A bit. Okay. Um, what, what else can we say? Um, Anything you put re before, it's a repeat. Rebuild, repair, re relate. And all, so when it says re, member. In other words, my member, which is now broken, reassemble. Put it together again. This thing is a symbol. Uh, this, this, this 
bread I have broken. I give it to you to eat so that inside you I become one. Unless a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides it alone. But when it has died, it will bring forth much fruit. He says, I have died so I may be in each one of you. But I'm not complete in each one of you until each one of you is together. Then you reassemble me. You remember. Do you understand that? That's why it's important to have one loaf so that when we eat it, the one loaf eaten by every member of the communicant becomes one loaf inside us. Jesus preferred for you to pray. When you pray, say our father rather than my father. The church is called the body of Christ, not the bodies of Christ. It's called the bride of Christ, not the wives of Christ. It's collective. Then, in verse 25, in the same manner, he also took the cup. How many cups? Small, small ones. Eh? You remember the small, small ones that we dump past crawl, crawl from one member to another? It, it's been packaged for us, so everything is hygienic but meaningless. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper. I don't care what you say, I get my direction from the Bible, not from tradition. And if the Bible says that is how it was done in the beginning, that is how I will do it now. Content for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. He, took, uh, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup, one, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Then he goes on to say, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, mentioning Bread, cup, bread, cup. <clears throat> then he goes on to say, therefore, in verse 27, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. And we think eating the bread and drinking the blood in an unworthy manner means that you are sinful. What it says is you are not discerning the body. What you are doing doesn't reassemble the body. It is not blending. You are not making the body to be one. What we are doing is just sitting in pews, listening to worship, listening to message, and going out without being one. We're being individuals, but we're not gelling together. That's not the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church is not to create a platform for the preacher to expel, to expound his ideas. It's for the body. To function where Jesus can feel those he has died and he rose again yes um, all right yes um, the the bread because I've had this said while we were in Ireland the bread um, I, I understand that is a, a little bit more practical when you have a loaf of bread and you break it into pieces but are we allowed to still do the small cups, perhaps not fill it until it's blessed in a single bigger cup and then poured individually so that for the administration of it, it will be easy. We're still taking from the same cup blessed. But I don't know whether we it's can the same. Ask. It's the same principle now. If you break the bread, you can break the bread into small, small pieces. Yes. So wait. Let the, 
let the plane land at Heathrow before you start disembarking. <laughs> The plane is still near stains. It's not quite landed yet. So let it land, and then we'll explain more. If you don't know what we're doing,